Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to work on a lavender illustration. This illustration is really easy and perfect for beginners. So don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. We are going to use three different watercolor pencils for this illustration. One purple pencil and two different green pencils. I picked one lighter and one that's a bit darker. The lavender that's in the background is more translucent. It's out of focus. So for the background lavender, I use my purple watercolor pencil and I'm drawing a straight line. And then I place little dots along the line. This pigment should be really light, so don't put a lot of pigment down here to make sure that they are nice, light and translucent. Next, I'm using a damp brush and I dab on the watercolor pencil lines or watercolor pencil dots that I placed earlier. I'm not painting in that area, I'm just dabbing it and I'm not smushing around any of the pigment. This will loosen the pigment just enough to bleed out a little bit, but it will not fully bleed out. So you can still see some of the dots from the pencil lines, from the pencil marks that were on the page. This way, the original lavender in the background does have a different grade of translucency. Make sure that the water dots are not touching. I leave a little space in between the water dots. Next, I'm using the darker green pencil to draw in the stems. I do this really lightly. They are not harsh pencil lines because I want them to turn out to be translucent in the end as well. Then I'm using a slightly damp brush and I just go over those pencil lines to let them bleed out a little bit and activate the watercolor pencil. The stems all somehow meet up in the middle, almost like a bouquet. It just looks neater and in the end, if you wish so, you can paint a vase around them or even just a bow around them. I prefer the natural patches of lavender as they grow, so I will not paint it as a bouquet. It will just be one of those loose patches that you have in your backyard. Watercolor pencils in general dry really fast, so I just give it five minutes to dry and then I go in with the lilac with a plum pencil I believe again and I'm using the same method as before to paint in a second layer of the lavender. This time the pigment I'm putting down on the page is a bit more dense. I make sure to make, create more dots on the page which I will activate later just to have more pigment on the page and this front layer of lavender will simply be more dark and will contain more pigment, which makes it appear in the foreground. In order to make it look realistic, the lavender should overlap in some areas. It should overlap with the lavender in the background, as well as the lavender in the foreground should overlap. Once I'm happy with the placement of all of the lavender, I'm using a damp brush again and I dab on the page. At this point, you need to be a little more careful because the pigment is more intense and therefore tends to bleed out more. So be aware of how much water there is in your brush. Also keep in mind that when you do this, some of the pigment from the page will soak up in your brush. So if I would be using the brush that I just used to like dab on the lavender on a white sheet of paper, I would be creating a purple spot there. And I'm painting in more stems for the lavender which is in the foreground. This time I'm pressing the watercolor pencil a bit harder to get more pigment down and this will just make it be less translucent so more in the foreground. 
The stems that are in the foreground will also be activated with water, but I'm not activating them with as much water so that they don't bleed out as much as the stems that were used for the background. Also, always make sure that the stems do overlap as well. The lavender that's in the foreground needs some more depth to look really good. So I'm going in with my brush and take the pigment directly off of the watercolor pencil. My brush is just slightly damp and I take the pigment off and I create the same dots that I created earlier with the watercolor pencil. It just makes my life easier. I could be using the watercolor pencil again to dab in all the dots with the watercolor pencil first and then activate them with a brush, but it's just easier to get light unconnected dots on the lavender if you take the pigment straight out of the watercolor pencil. These dots are not touching and they are really loosely placed. Watercolor pencil dries really fast because I'm not working with a lot of water. So when I see some areas that could be a little darker, I can go back in with a watercolor pencil or with a brush that is filled with a pigment from the watercolor pencil and just darken up that area to give it some more depth. The danger here is to overwork the lavender. This would mean that you create too many dots of the lavender and you darken it up too much. So just be wary of that. I know watercolor always dries lighter and it's a good excuse to add more dots, but just don't do it. Wait for it to be completely dry and if you want to add more, you can add more later. Watercolor pencil can always be used dry, so you do not need to activate it with water. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm first using the light green to create some grass and then I'm using the darker green color to create some more grass. It just looks neat if you have two different colors in there. It's just a color variation and it just makes it all look more interesting. The grass should always overlap and they can also be painted on top of the lavender. By the time you paint it in all the grass, the lavender on top should be dry. And if you feel like it, you can always add a bit more purple pigment at this point. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you soon with another video.